use it as an asset, not a deficit. It is here and here to stay. And uh, we need to make sure that we get in front of it because this is really changing even Moore's laws. It's not doubling every every 18 months. This is doubling every six months. So it, we have to get in front of this quickly because it's going to be here and be an impact in education for years to come. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. Hi, I'm Dr. Avis Williams. I am the proud superintendent of NOLA Public Schools in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we are an all-charter school district, and we have 72 schools, about 43,000 students, and uh, I am the authorizer for about 34 different charter networks. We call our students scholars because that's what they are. Hello, I'm Rob Clayton, Superintendent of Warren County Public Schools in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We are the fourth largest school district in Kentucky with a little more than 18,000 students, uh, 23 uh, regular uh, A1 schools, uh, comprehensive schools, and then we do have uh, seven sites where we offer alternative programming. And uh, it's a very diverse school district represented by a little more than 90 countries and over 120 uh, languages, uh, dialects. I'm Gustavo Baderas, superintendent of schools in the Beaverton School District, a west side suburb of Portland, Oregon, that services uh, roughly 40,000 kids on 54 campuses. How is your school district approaching ChatGPT? So as it relates to AI and ChatGPT, I think our first step was reviewing our policies and just looking to see if there were any additions that we need um, that, that would address how, when, or if ChatGPT would be appropriate. Um, and that's something that we're in the process of doing right now. Um, it's just reviewing those policies to see if they're even appropriate as we uh, move into this, this next phase of, of how technology is being used in the classroom. Another piece is just uh, making sure that we have um, the information that we need, the professional learning um, that we need across the board. You know, there was a time when in education that there were only certain teachers who might need um, technology support or technology training. Um, and that, that those days are past. You know, at this point, anyone who is working in our, in our schools and who's interacting with our, our children or our families uh, will need some, some professional learning on this. And so uh, we're looking at um, what's, what's available. You know, this is something that, that's a fact-finding mission for us to find the best professional learning that's appropriate for schools to be able to engage appropriately with AI and chat GPT. Right now, we don't have a district approach to it. Um, I will tell you, my first uh, interaction with ChatGPT was probably about 90 days ago. But since then, it's been amazing how often it has come up in a passing conversation. Everybody now is aware of, of ChatGPT. That being said, we have way more questions than answers. Uh, obviously, I can see some tremendous benefits. We've used it. We used it as, as part of creating some bylaws for our education foundation that we have established and created because it gives you a great template to, to begin. And uh, it's been my experience in most cases, if you have a good template, uh, then you can really uh, take that and uh, be very efficient with your time and, and then also deliver on a great product. So I do think it's gonna be a, a tremendous resource in so many areas. The biggest concern, you kind of mentioned it earlier, it does a lot of work for you. So what would be some potential unintended consequences from that? Would it uh, impact motivation? Would it create a, a greater disconnect? Because in years past, maybe you spent all the time doing the research and now uh, you've got this AI tool that can expedite the, the level of research and so forth. Uh, but I do think it will still be a very beneficial tool in terms of, of learning. There's some value in spending time researching, but there's also some tremendous value in getting straight to uh, the information and then taking the time to, to, to gain a deeper understanding. But it is something that without any question, we're gonna have to uh, have a, a, a good type process coming back for the 23-24 school year in terms of 
how are we going to uh, not only uh, allow for implementation, but then also uh, be very mindful of some of those pitfalls. AI and chat GPT, again, it is a tool for us to use. I think right now, you know, my, my, my CTO was president or past chair of COSIN. So, you know, I know that he's in the mix nationally as well. But for us, we're, we're blocking it for kids right now. We'll leave it open for the adults. And we're having dialogue with the adults on how to leverage that for our kids. So that's what we're doing here in Beaverton. We're right in the middle of Intel. So Intel is all around us. We have the Intel farms all around us, and that's high-tech industry. So we have a lot of engineers in the region. So that's what we're doing here in Beaverton until, until we have time to figure it out because it does become an equity issue. When you have kids that come to school with cell phones or other devices and they have access to chat GPT on their cell phones, for example, and other kids may not. So we got to figure this one out. And for us, it's going back to what I said earlier in the conversation. Uh, use it as an asset, not a deficit. It is here and here to stay. And uh, we need to make sure that we get in front of it because this is really changing even more as laws. It's not doubling every every 18 months. This is doubling every six months. So it, we have to get in front of this quickly because it's going to be here and be an impact in education for years to come. Are there any positive use cases that you've heard from students around ChatGPT? Yeah, I think um, I think the positive things I've had is is exploring Chat GPT um, as kind of like as a foundation, as the as the beginning, an entry into um, a new topic or a new a new unit um, in class. I have had um, a couple of history teachers who have talked about using it from that standpoint um, and giving scholars an opportunity to develop the questions that they might ask and making sure that the questions are rigorous enough and that they are aligned with getting the responses that would be necessary to be able to complete whatever the project or writing assignment might be. Um, and so just being proactive and using it on the front end um, is something that I've heard several history teachers talk about doing. Um, and, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is getting the fear factor out of the way. Um, I think that there's, um, there's some, some definite fears around, you know, cheating and around it watering down what scholars are actually learning. Um, I don't personally have that fear because I just think that it's, it's, as, as time changes, we evolve and we evolve with, with new technologies. And that's essentially what this is. I know that it is being utilized by by students, uh, I'm just not sure of specific examples because, because again, this really uh, came to light, at least in my space, over the last three months or so of school. That's probably something that, that we'll be able to, to gain a little more information on as uh, time goes on. I think the lesson planning is a perfect example. I think what I've heard of people being able to do lesson plans pretty quickly and just as a, a, um, as a document for them to review. So just any lesson, any model, lecture possibly even. I mean, so my CTO would create a photo, just a, a little art shop photo, and ChatGPT did it all within like 17 seconds, he said. So, you know, our CTO did a, a production for our extended cabinet just on ChatGPT just the other day and showed all the positive impacts that it could possibly make into a school and a school lesson. And I think what's happening now in schools is teachers are playing with ChatGPT. So you're gonna see a lot of changes happening here soon in terms of how even lesson planning is happening because it is really a, a game changer with regards to a time saver for folks. It's not the end all be all, but it gives you a good starting base in terms of where to go. With regards to ChatGPT, are you changing any of your techniques for grading students and the types of assignments being used in the classroom in your school district? So we have not started approaching this from a grading standpoint yet. Um, and part of it is that we haven't had the need to, but in, in, in the vein of being proactive is certainly on the table uh, because as we consider policies, that would be one of the spaces uh, where we might consider if we need to do something different from a policy standpoint as it relates to how or if or when um, scholars would be able to use um, chat GPT and AI. Um, so that's something that I expect that we will lean into as we move um, into this upcoming school year. Without question, we're going to have to be very clear on, on our processes for what we expect our students to do in, in terms of uh, their connection with AI, but then also uh, ensuring that 
We have a process for monitoring the appropriate use and, uh, and then addressing concerns when we see that it's not uh, being used as, uh, as it should. Yeah, that is a great question that's being posed across the country right now in terms of how we're looking at things. I think right now we're going through an advisory group to really try and figure out how to, how to best address this. Because again, there's some systems that are, they're allowing kids to use ChatGPT as a rough draft where kids have to kind of come back and refine it with their own words and their own vision toward any paper, for example. I think we're still in those stages of really looking at uh, how can we best leverage ChatGPT to be an asset to our kids? And how do we make sure that our kids use it in a positive manner? I think that's where we're stuck on as a society is, you know, some kids are going to keep using ChatGPT the way um, they feel they need to. But how do we make sure that we don't use it as a deficit and go back to, you know, hand in your three page paper, handwritten, and, right? That's, that's, that doesn't work. How do you make sure that kids really understand how to use the technology in an asset based manner and not view as not viewed as a deficit? So but we're still having those discussions in terms of how how we're going to be really laying down the policies in our district, as is everybody else. Thanks for listening to our SmartSocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our SmartSocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.